you both for being here. General Stewart, you said in your opening remarks that uh, we've gone from a one plus one strategy in our military to today we have four plus one. You just mentioned five North Korea, Russia, China, Iran extremists. Um, on top of that, we have cyber and space. The question I have, and I, I'm sort of a bottom line guy, I want to talk about China and Russia, our two symmetric um, uh, contrarian threats, I believe. China is spending right now next year, or this year, it's projected in real equivalent purchasing power parity terms. They'll spend $826 billion on their military. We'll spend directionally $600 million, and I would argue that today we have the smallest army since World War II, the smallest navy since World War I, and the smallest and oldest air force ever. Sir, in your mind, what is China's uh, purpose in this massive buildup that they are uh, in the midst of right now? Purpose number one, to be able to fight and win in the Pacific. Uh, Would you say they're on parity with us in the Pacific today? Does your intelligence reveal that? In some aspects, and I won't talk about them here, there's right. parity, but in some areas we are still far superior. Uh, and we look at them in all domains, space, cyberspace, air, land, surface, uh, sea and surface. So we're competing in all those domains. Primary objective, fight and win in the Pacific, be prepared if the United States enter the conflict in the Pacific and in increase the cost of any of our actions in the Pacific. Are you concerned about the PLA, PLA reorganization in China and what in fact does our intelligence say it will have on our ability to, uh, to uh, stand up to them? So they not only continue to reorganize, they continue to refine tactics, they continue to refine doctrine. We have not seen them do the major end-to-end -end, um, full-scale rehearsal that says all of those pieces are stitched together in a, a real war fighting capability. Right. So Director. they're building pieces, but it's not fully integrated at this point. Sorry. Director, it's hard to call me call you director, but I'm glad I can. Thank you. Um, today, Africa is a major involvement for China, economically, militarily. Um, they're building a base right now in Djibouti, just miles away from our base at Lamonier. What is the purpose of that base, and are you concerned? What does our intelligence say that their uh, objective is in, in Africa? Well, the Chinese are uh, expanding their, their influence uh, globally. Uh, they are looking at... Uh, uh, areas of the world that uh, you wouldn't necessarily think a regional power uh, like China uh, would want to uh, be engaged in, but whether it's Africa, uh, whether it's uh, Latin America, whether it's uh, any number of places, uh, the Chinese are making substantial investments and sometimes linking that, as you mentioned, with Djibouti and building a base there. Uh, but I think they, they view that as um, a part of their long-term strategy to become a global power, not just a regional power. Um, and they, they are spending an extraordinary amount of effort uh, to, in investment. That One Belt uh, Road situation um, gives them access, um, uh, expedited access to, to Europe, uh, but access also to the Indian Ocean region and the Middle East. Uh, so they've been very aggressive in pursuing um, those types of initiatives, um, I think, with, with a long-term strategy in mind of, of being a, a, a global uh, power. General, Russia... Can, can uh, I, can I'm I sorry, yes, sir. If I could. One Belt, One Road is about getting access to resources and access to markets. And if you have, want access to resources, access to markets, You've got to build infrastructure to defend your economic lifeline. I want to get to Russia, but history says that the country with the largest and strongest economy will have the largest and strongest military. Today, China's economy is on parity with the U.S. when adjusted for purchasing power parity. They have a much stronger growth rate, and I think that's one of the things we have to deal with. I want to move to Russia very quickly. I only have a minute left. General, Russia in the last five years has dramatically changed their global footprint. They have Murmansk, Kaliningrad, Crimea now. And now, Tortus and, and uh, Latakia in, on, the, on the coast of Syria. In your mind, what does our intelligence say that uh, Russia intends to do with that encircling of that part of the world with those major bases, now warm water and cold water? The encirclement, uh, as you describe it, the western anti-axis barrier runs from the Arctic through uh, uh, the Bering, uh, the Murmansk, mm -hmm. through Kaliningrad, Crimea, and down, is to break out of the encirclement, their words, uh, caused by NATO countries uh, in their near abroad. So again, the anti-access, anti-denial capability is to increase the cost of any U.S. NATO action against Russia and to protect and give them buffer space. 
I don't think they're done. I think they'd like to extend that uh, barrier down through uh, the Mediterranean. I'm worried about actions that they might take in Libya uh, to increase that, uh, that barrier. But that is about breaking out of the NATO encirclement. Thank you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Chairman McCain, Senator McCaskill.